Welcome to a rather special episode of Fully Charged. Earlier this year, I drove a Cadillac ELR plug-in hybrid from Los Angeles to Las Vegas to visit the Consumer Electronics Show. The Cadillac ELR uses the same propulsion system found in the Chevrolet Volt or the Vauxhall Ampera, a 16.5 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery and a 1400 cc petrol engine. The propulsion system has been refined and retuned in the Cadillac and obviously the exterior and interior are very different from the Volt. I was joined on the drive by Chelsea Sexton, a Californian electric car advocate and a charming passenger. So this is a bit of a fully charged slash carpool crossover. Um, it's nice though. Yeah, no, it's been a lovely it's, ride. It's quite a hard ride as well, isn't it? I'm surprised. It's quite a... Well, part of it's the streets you're on. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> You know, this is the very first Cadillac I've ever driven. Really? Absolutely, without <laughs> question. I've never driven another Cadillac. And I'm really proud to say the first Rolls-Royce I ever drove was electric. Wow. And now the first Cadillac I've ever driven is at least... Oh, no, I do need to adjust that mirror as well, because I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's rated very similarly to the Volt. A few right. less miles, so it's about 37 or so, right. depending on how you drive. In terms of... Um, drive quality, which is something I think I know less about than the average Joe. <laughs> but now having driven, because I've now driven like literally hundreds of different cars, sure. and you do kind of get a feel for it. Eventually you learn by default. But this feels extremely smooth and refined, and it, yes. you know, the, the, the adjustments I'm making, it doesn't feel, I'm not kind of concerned about it veering off or anything like no. that. No, I mean, it's, it's really solid feeling, Yeah, which is a comment that we've always gotten about the GM plug-in hybrids. Right. The Volt and the Ampera and the ELR. Because that's the thing that I think you have a handle on that is completely beyond me, is the sort of, effectively, the psychology of, of car manufacturers right. and the way they operate and what, what, you know, what, when they say we're doing this, <laughs> you always seem to know <laughs> what they're really doing is this. And then you all, what's so annoying is you've always been proved right. <laughs> Well, I've been doing it a long time. You've been doing it a long time. time, yeah. No, but a lot of it's policy driven too. So, yeah. and, and a lot of the announcements from everybody, including folks like Tesla, are geared toward influencing that policy yeah. more than necessarily what they're going to do. So, there's lots of behind the scenes lobbying all the time. Yeah. The same ZEV regulation that has existed for 20 years is still in play. There's other policies around the world. So, there is some gamesmanship involved yeah. <laughs> and a little bit of translating hype to English. Yes. And, and I'm fascinated by the kind of rise of the city-state, yes. if you like. And, 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 and when I've been to two kind of EU meetings with mayors from all over the... So the so London mayor, Boris Johnson, mayor of Berlin, mayor of Paris, Amsterdam, Brussels, you know, like lots and lots of them. And they're all following this very similar policy, which is can then see, you know, it took me a while to work it out, but I went, oh, that's why you've got a car being manufactured that you can drive on a gas engine and then hold the, hold the, hold the electricity until you reach yeah. the city, because they're going to make, you know, this car will be allowed to drive into London in three years' time, whereas no diesel cars, no petrol cars will, right. which is incredible. I mean, I, can't, I still haven't really, I don't think anyone's quite taken on board what that, the impact that will make, I mean, it's going to be huge. Well, and it's, it's fascinating to watch, too, because... And is that sort of legislation on the cards in, in the U.S.? New York has tried it, but has not gotten right. it through. So it is strictly a European right. construct at the moment. But we're seeing that not only are sort of federal and state policies that we've been used to forever dictating propulsion and vehicle design in that regard, so we have electric cars in large part because there's a law saying they had yeah. to, yeah. but now we're seeing... European municipal laws and these congestion charges actually influencing vehicle design. Right. So when Chevrolet sent the Volt and the Impera to Europe, the very first plug-in vehicle to actually be able to use gas first right. and hold your EV range for later, right. specifically so that when you get to the city center you can yeah, be in EV mode. Right. Anywhere else you'd want to use EV range first and as little gas as possible. Yeah. Yeah. So it's fascinating to watch the dynamics of how the policies change what those cities look like, but also what folks in Detroit or you know other Japan or Europe yeah. or wherever are sitting there engineering. From the, the 
history I learned from the movie Who Killed the Electric Car, the car history and that stuff. Yeah. Is that le- is that legislation still in place? I'm kind of yes. lost track. So that so a car manufacturer has to. It is still in place. It's right. it's constantly adjusted, right. and we're constantly going back for, for new revisions and new hearings, and everybody's weighing in on all sides and all of the ways you might imagine. But yeah, if you sell more than a certain number of vehicles in California, you must produce a certain number that are zero right. emission, um, and you know that can be hydrogen or EV, and you can make some plug-in hybrids and some other things that right. will kind of go into the mix. So you have right. to get a total number of credits through a variety of different ways. Right. There are also about 10 states that follow CARB's regulations. Right. So they can put cars on the road in any of those states and get credit you know, oh, in I California you can, and vice versa. Right. And there's so you some, can sell a whole bunch of massive inefficient trucks in California if you were selling loads of EVs in, in Vermont, Texas. Yeah. Vermont, yeah. Vermont. yeah, it tends to be Cal- West Coast and Northeast are, are kind of right. where, it, where it is. So between all of those states, it's a good chunk of the buying population of the country that has to have an option to buy something with a plug. But what we're seeing is that we have a few automakers that are all in, that truly believe in the plug, whether it's plug-in hybrid or pure EV, and are building and selling as many as the market will absorb. And then the vast majority of automakers are still very much on the fence. And are building and selling as few as they have to, just the minimum right, number right. to comply with the law. And so yeah. those have all been dubbed the compliance cars compliance that are cars, yeah. a few hundred of this or a thousand of that, yeah. and maybe you can lease it but not actually buy it. Yeah. And, and, and that's a, a huge spot of tension right now because there are literally two dozen types of plug-in cars that you can get in California, right. plug-in cars and bikes. There are three that are available anywhere in the country. And as long, and one of them is almost a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Which is the so is it's the, the Tesla, Tesla Model the S and the Volt. And the Volt, wow. So, so you and you could buy those anywhere in the states. Anywhere in the country, right. yeah. And, and you know there are a few others that are available in a lot of places, but not yeah. all of them. But as long as your choices really boil down to Leaf or Volt, if you're looking for something under yeah. fifty thousand dollars, the market will only ever be so big. Yeah. And so you know all of these other dozens of programs are are lovely. I mean they're nice, yeah. but. No, they I've don't move a lot the, of the cars. They're all really good cars. But the, yeah. And that's the most frustrating part. Even yeah. the compliance cars are really good yeah, yeah, cars. Yeah. <laughs> There's almost a sense that the market likes them more than the than the automakers yeah. do because they are so, so fundamentally well, I think good. That, and I think that's the thing that really came across clearly in that film and in my experience is that the the engineers, the designers, the people who actually build them right. are really into them. Yes. You know, they're not they're not doing oh god, we're going to do a bloody electric one. Yeah. You know, they're really obsessed. They're fascinated by the detail of it. And I talked to engineers at Ford and um, uh, Volkswagen. Yes. Now they're really, really into it. But then you go, yeah, I know you are, but the guy, yeah. <laughs> the older bloke in the suit, right? <laughs> Which who, who talks to presidents around the country and prime ministers, you know, around the world. Exactly. They're going. Mm, yeah, <laughs> isn't that? Aren't you sweet? Yeah. You like that car with the plug? <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Well, and it makes sense, though, if you think about it, because we know from the consumer side that the best way to get anyone to appreciate what a plug-in car is is to let them drive it. Yes. To give them any kind of experience yeah, with it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. If you think about who has the most experience in these car companies, it's the engineers and the designers. Yeah, and yeah. so they have, they didn't get it at first. No. And you could kind of tell to talk to them. But now they really get it. They're yeah. all in. And it's a matter of continuing to widen that circle of people who get it. Yeah. But if you if people can't buy what isn't available. Yes. So as long as we only have these sort of compliance cars and very limited availability, yeah. you know, it's never going to happen. I mean, I mean, what is the situation now in California? I mean, I've been very aware, I mean, I've been here two days, of the n- a noticeable number of electric vehicles that I've seen, yes. particularly in, in kind of central Los Angeles. The amount of just the sort of Tesla spotting I've done. There's, yes. <laughs> there's a lot of them around. The um, a lot of Leafs. You know, obviously the Prius is absolutely it, it's, yeah it's saturated. ubiquitous. It's extraordinary yeah. that that the success. But they're of that a cliche car. here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so no, many. they kind of, now they because I think they were a cliche. Five. They were an absolute sort of tofu eating. I'm a, well, yes. Yeah. All those kind sort of, of cliche boring. Now. And it, it, they're now just common. Yeah. You know, they're just normal. They're, also, you know, you can tell that it's a very wide range of people across the social yeah. spectrum have got them because you can get second-hand ones presumably fairly cheap. Oh, absolutely. You know, 
And there's three different versions, just of the yeah. Prius, to yeah. say nothing of the other hybrid. Yeah, they're, they're all over the place. But I mean, I don't know what this, the kind of level of uh, um, uptake is, I mean, in terms of numbers of electric, of pure electrics, sort of pure plug-in well, cars on the road in California. California is um, about 35, 40% of the country's consumption right. of plug-in vehicles. Right. In terms of, of actual penetration, it's around, uh, 3%, I think, between EVs and plug-in hybrids right. of total new car sales. Which varies is, a little bit. I mean, that, that is, I mean, it's a chunk, isn't it? I mean, yeah. it's still tiny, but it's a, that's a bigger chunk than anywhere else, I would think. Right, and considering that it is mostly constrained by what's available. I yeah. mean, that, that's the thing. We're, we don't have a situation where scads of models of plug-in cars are sitting around on lots waiting for people to come in no. and having to be heavily discounted and that sort of thing. For the most part, what is getting built is being sold. Yeah. You know, there's there's not a glut there. So, you know, that suggests that particularly if there was more variety, we have to get out of the small sedan space, <laughs> compact yeah. car space. Yeah. So once we start to have things like the Mitsubishi Outlander and the yeah. Tesla Model X, but things that are not small cars come to market and give people some option. Yeah. That's encouraging. It's getting them to come to market that remains the ongoing mission. Yeah. When I think of Cadillacs, though, you know, I'm going back to my childhood. I think I had a, 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 a die-cast model yes. Cadillac with wings, like a 1950s one, which would have had a sort of six and a half, seven litre V8, wouldn't it? Those, right. those cars would have done, and done ten miles to the gallon on extra leaded fuel. So it is extraordinary because I can't remember what the engine size is for a what the the, oh, this the gas is engine is four cylinder. One point four. I 1. mean, it's 4. it's basically the same propulsion system as the Chevrolet Volt, right? Which is very economical. So gas and electric combined, this one's rated about eighty-two miles a gallon. Right. So over kind of ten thousand miles, that's the kind of the average you get, which is pretty good because I'm I mean because your gallons that's pretty damn good because your gallons are smaller than that because that's the problem right. we have in the, in the UK is our gallons are bigger right so I didn't know which is the only thing <laughs> size is everything <laughs> in America the America, smaller one yeah it's so uncanny because I always used to think it was the other way around I want American gallons it must be it must massive. be bigger yeah, yeah like, like the 20, rest of it 20 gallons for us you know but they're actually yeah. smaller which is quite weird but then uh, so that would be more we'd be you'd be getting more like 90 95 right to the UK gallon doing that and the reality is just like in most of the plug-in hybrids, people tend to be electric every day. Yeah. So even over 10,000 miles, it would be higher than that because they're right. not using them in equal measure. I mean, because I'm always seeing tweets from, from uh, Volt and, and Ampera owners who are so thrilled that they, they've averaged 282 miles yes. over the last month. Right. Or you they've know, gone six months and never and bought never gas. Bought gas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because we're starting to see these more electrified plug-in hybrids in the ELR and the Volt and in the, in the i3 yeah. with the range extender that are so much of the time EVs for yes. people. Yeah. It's really instigating different conversations around how good a plug-in hybrid is, what it really means, what, what is its role in getting people to adopt electrification yeah. because they were dismissed in all versions for so long as, oh, right. eh, just a few electric miles. Those aren't real EVs. Well, right. Four years in, we're starting to get real data. Yeah. That shows, you know what? <laughs> yeah. 60 to 80 percent of the time, these are EVs. Yes. And do yeah. they deserve, at least do the more electrified versions of them deserve more credit yeah. in, in all forms than they've gotten so far? You know, they're kind of EVs with training wheels, really. Yes. <laughs> You know, we, we find that at least in the U.S., 30 to 40 percent of plug-in vehicle buyers either have or get solar on right. their houses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's such a huge cross-pollination yeah. between those two technologies, in part because it makes a tremendous amount of economic sense. Yeah. You know, if you have a plug-in car, then your pan the payback on your solar panels is that much faster because yeah. you're offsetting gasoline purchase. But it is also because people become more aware and more interested in what energy they're using, yeah. where it comes where it from, comes from. And who, who owns it, who buys it, exactly. who sells it. Yeah. And who's benefiting or not. Yeah. And it's interesting to watch it grow outwards in a variety of other technologies as home automation and yeah. smart grid and all of those conversations start to happen yeah. because it is fundamentally still the same thing. People want more empowerment and more control yeah. over their power use. 
Same thing in the conversations about piloted and autonomous driving. Yeah. Because it's a stepwise progression, but it's still the same thing of, you know, incrementally, when do you want to be the pilot of the car? When do yeah. you want to, you know, give up a bit of that control in exchange for the experience it provides? And, you know, our customers today or our buyers today are their buyers tomorrow. Yes, yeah. Oh, I just got a vibration in the seat. <laughs> oh, that was cool on that side because I went over the line. <laughs> oh. So I thought I had loose change falling out of my pocket. But it was a. Okay. It was just your vibrator. Just my vibrator. Hang on. I can't. I'm not getting on that side. I'm now testing. I'm <laughs> weaving all over the, the freeway. And like now, while I quickly while I think, I don't know what has been making us go along for at least the last ten miles. Are we still pure electric? We're still electric for a little Holy. bit more. Wow. I can't see a battery. It's level. on the far left, and there's one more. Oh, there's one bar. more. So we are. Oh, so it was. A, I was. I, I yes. could sense yes, you had a that, lack of kilowatt you now. You had that anxiety me. coming, yeah. No, it wasn't there. I wasn't anxious. I just, because I went, God, if the engine's on now, it's really quiet because yeah. I haven't noticed anything. Well, so when it switches over, that battery will be replaced by a gas tank. Right. But if not for that, I'm still not sure you notice. So it's still on. So we, I don't know how far we've done. Uh, 35 miles. 35 miles. Oh, no, actually 40 on electric. Right. 35 on gas. From earlier today but from when i started we've yeah. been 40 we've yeah 40 miles, 40 miles on, yeah. which is which has been 90 percent of that has been at highway yes. speed so obviously i've been driving it exquisitely well absolutely with but very very little lane deviation it is a rare <laughs> la weekend day without a ton of traffic it's amazing, so right? it's yeah. we've been going seven well yeah. we've, we've been going at least the speed limit <laughs> 65 to 70. i don't think i've broken the speed limit i've been very careful Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Now I'm seeing EV range one mile. There we yeah. go. It's very, and now there's none. So I just want to be aware of when the engine starts. I say you don't look at that and tell me when it starts. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying not to look. <laughs> I mean, that's the question is, do you notice? I haven't yet, but I don't even, I'm, not, I'm now really not looking. <laughs> I don't want to see. Because we're near quite a big truck. Certainly. Yes, pay attention to the truck. <laughs> Not hitting the truck. I'm still not sure. I've got a feeling it is running now, but I can't. Can you tell? Don't tell me. But I'm not going to tell you. If it is running now, it's uncanny how... I'd say it isn't yet. It is not. All right. <laughs> I want to be stopped by a traffic officer who's asking me why I'm driving with my hands in this particularly unusual position. <laughs> I was trying not I to see I don't want to see my dashboard. I don't want to see if my engine's running, officer. <laughs> Sir, step away from the vehicle. <laughs> Actually, no, we're, we're on gas. No. Yeah, we switched the gauge, didn't we? So it must show it elsewhere. But yeah, we've been on gas for the last two miles. Wow. <laughs> I just floored it there. I cannot hear. I can feel a delay. And obviously you, you couldn't feel any transition. No. That, because the, the, oh, Tesla. Um, Dealer Tesla. Oh, is it? How do you know that? You see, you know so much about cars. <laughs> the I, all I know plate. is it's red. <laughs> <laughs> Los Angeles is 269 miles from Las Vegas, but we did it with ease. We averaged 68 miles to the gallon without a recharge. That's American gallons, of course, they're smaller. The scenery was spectacular, as was the sunset. We arrived in Vegas after dark, ready for the madness that is CES. Remember to subscribe so you won't miss the next episode, self-driving cars, electric bicycles, and the internet of things coming soon on Fully Charged.